In this video, we will see how easy it is to annotate images using the Label Tool GUI. The images can be annotated for three different techniques using the Label Tool GUI. Classification, Object Detection and Segmentation. The techniques or modes can be identified by the three icons shown here. The selected mode will be highlighted in blue. One can navigate between the modes by just clicking on the corresponding icons. Below the icons, we can see the name of the currently chosen topic. Clicking on the name will open a dialog box that lists the entire folder structure of topics. We can select a topic or change from one topic to another by just clicking on the name. The images that have been imported into different topics from the cockpit GUI can be seen in the middle panel. In the next block below, we have different tools that facilitate the navigation between the images in a given topic. The single arrows can be used for sequential navigation. The double arrows jumps to images without any annotations. For user-friendliness, the functionalities are displayed as tooltips when hovering over the various elements. It is also possible to directly jump to an image by entering the image number. Continuous scrolling is also possible via the scroll bar. Additionally, in the middle panel, thumbnail-based navigation is also possible. The thumbnails can be toggled on and off as shown here. There are two additional buttons in this area whose features are accessible only in combination with the double arrows. The first one is for shuffling the images. Activate the feature by pressing down on the shuffle button. Now, using the double arrow, one can navigate to random images in the topic. This feature is useful when annotating large datasets that are monotonous. The second button is for jumping to images with comments. Activating this feature triggers the double arrow to move between images that have comments. The comments themselves can be accessed by clicking here. More on this feature will be presented later in this video. Please note that it is possible to activate only one feature at a time. Activating shuffle deactivates comments and vice versa. It is nonetheless possible to deactivate both features at once. Then the double arrows will facilitate navigation between non-annotated images. The information button shows an overview about the number of images that are annotated and the object classes that have been used for the annotation. When a pre-trained model exists, we can use the Suggest Classification function to call the model and automatically classify new images. We will come back to this functionality later. The image can be magnified and the brightness can be adjusted with these buttons. Using this button, single images can be uploaded into the topic. This button is used to assign images to virtual topics. There will be a separate tutorial on this. The attributes of the displayed image can be accessed via this button. The delete button can be used to delete an image and its corresponding annotations. The created annotations can be saved using the save button. Using this button, one can both save the annotations and navigate to the next image without annotations. The available keyboard shortcuts can be accessed by clicking the question mark. These come in very handy when labeling large datasets. The language of the GUI can be switched between German and English with the downward arrow button on the right of the EN button. Let us start with the simplest annotation technique, image classification. The chosen dataset, Toys, consists of four different object classes as seen via the drop-down menu. 
These object classes have been defined while creating the topic in the cockpit GUI. To classify an image, simply select an object class from the drop-down menu and click the plus button. I am going to select triangle. The selection is displayed on the rightmost panel. The annotation can be saved by using the save button. Using the tick mark, we can save the current annotations and take you to the next unlabeled image. In the next image, we see only rectangles, so we will annotate accordingly. Let us say we made a mistake, like choosing circles. No sweat, simply go to the right panel and delete the corresponding classification. The next image shows circles and squares. So let's classify and by continuing this process for the rest of the images, we have created a dataset with classifications. By clicking on the info button, we see an overview that two images have been classified and the total number of classifications per object class. Now, let us label some images for performing object detection. First, let us navigate to the mode by clicking on the icon. Here we see the first image in the topic, a triangle. Draw a bounding box around the object using the click and drag function of the mouse. The handy drop-down menu displays all available object classes. Choose triangle. In the rightmost panel, one can see the coordinates of the bounding box. Let's save and move on to the next image. Here we have two rectangles. Let us draw a bounding box around the first one and select the correct object class. We can now use the copy functionality to create a second box. Click on this button to create a copy of the bounding box. Now. Just pick up the copy and move to the desired spot. The box is too big for the object. Simply resize it by using the control points. If an object is accidentally labeled with the wrong object class, no worries. Go to the right panel and delete the corresponding bounding box, which will be highlighted on the image as you click on the coordinates, or Simply click on the wrongly labeled bounding box in the image and change the object class in the drop-down menu. The labeling process can be repeated until the desired number of images have been labeled. An overview of the images can be seen by clicking the information button. The dataset can now be used to train an object detection model by using the model training GUI. We trained a model earlier using a different dataset. The pre-trained model can now be used for assisted labeling. Simply use the Suggest Bounding Boxes tool to let the model suggest labels. Select the object detection service and the model name of the pre-trained model. Using the drop-down menu, the Suggest function can be used for either one image, a number of images, or all images in the dataset. The bounding boxes that come from models are additionally tagged with the model name and confidence. If satisfied with the suggestion, one can move to the next image. If not, it is possible to either modify or delete the labels. Upon modification, the label loses the tags since it is no longer a direct output from the pre-trained model. Next, we will see how to perform image segmentation. First, let us navigate to that mode by clicking on the icon. Using the predefined object classes, we can draw segments around the objects using one of these three options by drawing outlines. Let's pick Polygon. By clicking the plus button, we define the object class. Now, 
In the image, we mark points around the desired object. We close the segment by double-clicking the last point. For this object, let me use the freehand option. Draw the segment by holding down the mouse. Releasing it closes the segment. For the next object, let us use the Auto Segment functionality. Activate it by clicking this button. Draw a box around the object. Define the foreground. Optionally, one can also explicitly define the background. Then, run auto segmentation. It is also possible to do supplementation to an existing segment. Similarly, one can also remove a part of the segment. Save and continue.